Hello, welcome back to Gumpar's Workshop. I'm Loz and today I'm going to talk a little about where I'm going with my routers in the workshop. So stay tuned. Right, those of you who have been with me since the start know that I'm not very happy with routers, especially as I had a rather old b q router that felt like it was a, a road breaker and I was scared to death of it. And when I started working in the workshop, I got myself a little Lumberjack 1500 uh, benchtop router that was all in, including the router, the lift and the little table. And that was on a Franken bench with the Rage 5 saw for quite a bit. And I played with it, didn't produce much, but I enjoyed playing with it and then I broke it. And then I dismantled the Franken bench for this workshop kit out. And while I was doing without a benchtop or tabletop router, I got myself a Trend T7 because I had to do a little bit of kitchen fitting work with number one son and he'd broken his router. So that st stood us in good stead. And the soft start has helped to reduce me <laughs> windiness when, when it comes to holding 1500 watts of vibrating carbide so I'm happy with that and I've also got the the little oldie uh, trimming router which hasn't had a lot of use but what use it's had I'm pleased with that so as part of the kit out of this uh, bucket list workshop I was going to have some form of permanently fixed tabletop router now having been burnt by the little lumberjack, possibly more due to my cack handedness than the, the poor thing, I was loath to go back with one of them. So it was a case of do I go for the smaller tabletop or another variation of the little lumberjack or something bigger like the benchtop ones. And th th there's a whole array of those that I looked at. And I did decided if I was going to basically create a tabletop with an insert in it, then it may as well be a standalone piece of equipment rather than having to move it about from bench top to the bench top. And then when it's not on the bench top, it has to be stood on something. So it may as well be a full size table. So I started looking at the tables now. Good grief. I want an inquiry, of course. Possibly the combi where it all fits into a cabinet saw and then all under one table with the Incra micro adjust fence all singing, all dancing. And then I worked out the price. Poo. So, and it's not a beginner's one, so I'd possibly need a couple of years of actually using a normal <laughs> workshop uh, kind of router before I get into the fancy micro adjustable fence so I was looking at through them there's the trend uh, that comes in a contractor's collapsible version of a full standard frame then there's the UJK with a variety of uh, phenolic or MDF or cast iron tops there's the Jessam which is up with the Incra the, the Incra table itself even with a simple fence and I looked at the price of the frame the top the insert the lift the router motor anyway what I did I, I did a cost benefit analysis spreadsheet put my value engineering hat on and I've come up with a solution that enables me to have a lift inside a proper workshop sized uh, router table for a price that could just about fit within my budget if I hold my breath. And it's the trend and the box is behind you. So let's go and have a look. And there it is. So you see full sized table just over 800 by just over 600. Uh, it comes with the power switch, the back fence, the extractor, the sorted, the guides, 
and the mitre fence. The inserts there and so that's the frame and the table and the insert and if I go with the trend T11 as opposed to the T7 the T11 unlike the T10 can be permanently fixed under the table and it can actually be micro adjusted well, you can't see because somebody kicked it in delivery uh, that, that, that there's a hole in the top that so you can actually adjust the height of the router bit from the top rather than messing around underneath so that's it of course i ordered this and it came two days ago and i ordered the t11 uh, which is actually in short supply at the moment, but I found one and it came this morning. Only you can't see it here because when I opened the box, it wasn't a T11, it was a T10, which is basically the same router, but not designed to be operated from underneath the table. The micro adjustment is a standard one. As on there, so it can't work from underneath. So, arranging a return, all, all excitement in the Grumpa household, and another one's on order. It's a bit more money. Now, if you go to Peter Millard's site, 10 Minute Workshop, I think he mentions the fact that regulation is changing this year so that you can't have dual use uh, uh, routers. You either have to have a handheld router or one, you know, the European style round bodied router that's permanently fixed underneath. So, anyway, I managed to get in under the wire. So, let's open this box. So, nice big box. It's Christmas. Two sacrificial fences. For the rear fence. A very nice aluminium fence. More gubbins, that's a technical term. They look like the screw feet. Table insert rings going. Another push stick for my collection. Nice mitre gauge, cast aluminium. They are, look like some lugs to wrap the, you can see, to wrap the power cable round underneath. Feather boards and the extractor hose attachment for the fence. <coughs> now, Looking at the time, if you wonder why I keep looking at the NVR switch, very nice. And one frame. Two frames. Three frames and two bars. When I first opened it, I thought, hang on, there's some stuff missing. But apparently, these frames are the end frames. This frame is at the top, but the end frames go on. 
and then these are the two low level bars across the whole thing. And under this car, oh wow, that is some top, that is really nice. Now, aside from the trend videos about these, I think that there's only one or two that people use, and I think there's only two separate reviews of it. And everybody says that when they open this, it looks better than it does on the web. Good God. Better than it does on the website. It goes to the top. So I'll show you the top. So you've got the fence guides to put the fence in that way, and then you have a mitre slot for your uh, uh, coping sled and box joint sleds. And this is what I, apart from the price this is what I got it for already cut and with the screws down and the adjustable bolts to get it flush with the top and the cast aluminium insert plate with the yeah. so it's got two sets of holes around the perimeter and then a set of holes for the trend routers that you, you can use as well with other varieties but there's also the hole through the top that you have your adjusting control that you push through into the T11 and it's the two that allow you to marry them, these two together, that allow you to save an awful lot of money on separate tops, inserts, risers and router, he says, justifying his expense. That's very nice. I'm going to have a break and then I shall have a go at assembling it, and by which time the T11 should have been delivered. Is that right? Yeah, that, that's about it. Crack on, guys. <laughs>